So welcome to another CData Coffee Break webinar. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're focusing on integrating multiple different EDI document types, in this case via dynamic file routing. My name is Matt. I'm a product specialist here at CData. And if you're not familiar with our Coffee Break series, these are short presentations centered around a live demo of one of our products. So we will have a live demo uh, shortly upcoming. Um, this is being recorded, so we will uh, distribute the recorded version uh, hopefully later today, maybe tomorrow, depending on how things go. And we do have a section at the end for live Q&A. So if a question occurs to you during the presentation, during the demo, whatever it is that you think we can help with, please do drop those questions in the Q&A tab of the Zoom panel. And I want to uh, respond to those in live time, but at the end, I'll look back through those and answer any questions that you might have. So uh, to keep things brief, uh, these are intended to be brief presentations. If you enjoy a cup of coffee, then hopefully uh, I'll be done before your coffee is done. Uh, we can jump right into things. First, I do just wanna say a few things about CData. We are a data connectivity company. So we're talking about data connectivity in the context of B2B integration, um, business to business integration like EDI. But just wanted to mention that we do much more than just that real-time data access to all the data within your data ecosystem and organization, ETL and ELT integrations, data virtualization, and so on. So just wanted to throw a quick shout out to CData's broader portfolio here. But we're talking today about CData Arc. CData Arc is the CData solution that provides no code end-to-end -end B2B automation. And you can see there on the screen sort of the four puzzle pieces that it takes to provide truly end-to-end -end B2B automation. Those are secure managed file transfer to talk with your partners, uh, EDI translation and mapping to integrate those different data formats, backend integration so that you can have truly end-to-end -end, where the backend is that second end. Um, and that can be databases or flat files or SaaS applications like ERP systems, CRM systems, accounting platforms, and so on. And then finally, you need business logic and routing to actually glue these pieces together. Uh, and we'll be talking about that fourth bullet point today um, not all of it, but at least one important piece of it. So we want to simplify EDI business logic with CData Arc. The whole reason to have a solution product like CData Arc is to uh, do things like, to simplify things like your EDI business logic. And we do that through dedicated logical connectors. Uh, we'll see these in the demo, but each connector in Arc performs a specific role. And some of these are logical roles that help us uh, implement this business logic. Uh, so th these are things like conditional data routing and workflows. We're going to be seeing that uh, in just a few moments. Uh, there's also a few other examples I wanted to shout out. Lookup logic for internal values and IDs. So if you're not familiar, frequently you'll have an account name or perhaps an email associated with an account, uh, but you need the internal ID to integrate that in your CRM system, for example. Um, and you need to go look up that internal value like an ID from the public value like an email or a first name, last name. And so lookup logic is how you do that in CData Arc. It's valuable for actual real world implementations with uh, SaaS applications. Another example is data validation and integrity checks. We'll see a little bit of that as well. Um, and importantly, we wanna do this without writing any code. So the reason to have Arc is to prevent our technical team from having to script this all out themselves. Uh, we want this all handled through a nice drag and drop UI. So today specifically, we're talking mostly about dynamic file routing. This is how we're gonna handle our multiple different EDI document types. Um, we're gonna do this with the branch connector. It's one of those logical connectors I alluded to. Uh, the purpose here, the sort of you know broad strokes approach is that we want to treat different EDI docs differently. Hopefully that makes sense. Not all EDI data is treated the same and we want, we want to make sure our EDI integrations um, uh, accommodate that. One way we want to do this is by detecting critical values in metadata. Metadata here meaning things like headers. Metadata just means data about the data. So data about the EDI data. And we want to ensure that we have flexible data types and logical operators. We can That way we can handle uh, things like dates or numerical values uh, and just generally ensure that whatever logical operation we want to perform to dynamically route data and treat different docs differently, um, those can be handled within ARC. And again, we want all of this without having to write any code. The whole purpose here is not having to script this ourselves. So that's enough talking. Like I said, these are meant to be brief. So we will hop right into the live demo of CData Arc. So hopefully everyone can see this on screen. This is CData Arc's workflow canvas. You can see I went ahead and built out a workflow we're gonna be talking about today ahead of time. 
I could have course done this live on air, but uh, to save some time, uh, we already have it configured. So that's nice. And so in this example, we want to uh, imagine how to handle a situation where we have one trading partner. In this case, we're talking to them via AS2 and we've given them the nice creative name, my partner. And this same trading partner sends us multiple types of EDI documents. Uh, since I had to go with some specific example to make this concrete, I've uh, gone with the example where uh, we are sending our trading partner purchase orders. Perhaps we're a retailer, an e-commerce platform, and they send us two different types of EDI documents. One is an 855 purchase order acknowledgement, and one is an 810 invoice. So after they acknowledge our purchase order, they invoice us for whatever we're purchasing. Now, if your business doesn't deal with these specific documents or that's not your role in this transaction, don't worry. Obviously, this is just one of many possible situations I could have chosen um, because we need something to make this a concrete example. So again, this the same principles apply regardless of what EDI document types and, and what role you have. So to briefly just go over this flow here, we're receiving those EDI documents over AS2. Notice that there's not two different connections for these different EDI document types where, you know, we just have one AS2 connection. They send two different types of data across that single connection. We have one X12 connector. X12 is, of course, in our EDI substandard. Um, and that X12 connector is going to validate our EDI documents and translate it into XML. Uh, we use XML as sort of a common data format for all of our more advanced processing. So once our EDI data has passed through this X12 connector, we can start, uh, first of all, we know we have a valid EDI document. We know it came from the right party and we can start working with it. Uh, another thing to mention though, is that we don't have two different uh, EDI connectors. We don't have two different X12 connectors to handle the two different EDI document types. All of the different EDI document types are handled by the same X12 connector. It knows all the document schema types. It can validate regardless of what document it is. Um, so again, we haven't done anything here to differentiate uh, the 855 from the 810. So that's why we need this branch connector. So this is the logical connector that is the focus of today. So if we open up this branch connector, we can see uh, these are the logical settings that I've configured in this branch connector to handle different EDI document types. So in this branch setting, we can see the logic that's implemented. And of course, you know, all with a sort of uh, text field or drag and drop or um, drop down uh, UI. So no, no code writing here, hopefully. Um, and let's examine what I have configured here to handle our 855s and our 810s from the same trading partner. So first, something important to understand is when we're branching, we want to choose the value that we're sort of examining or performing a logical operation on um, to determine our branch logic. So if I click this dropdown, we can see that the sort of options that we have are a message header, so metadata about the file, the file name itself. So perhaps you know our, our partner sends us documents and the file name specifies what kind of file it is, we can use that. Uh, or these things related to XPaths. And if you're not familiar with XPaths, it's a really simple concept. In an XML document, uh, the XPath is just sort of the location of a specific value in that document. So, you know, the location of the transaction code would be in a particular place in an XML document. And so you can provide an XPath to that place in the document to look at a specific value. But right now we're looking at a message header because ARC does something very convenient, very cool, which is when it translates our EDI document into XML, it goes ahead and reads the X12 transaction code. The X12 transaction code describes what kind of document this is. So an EDI invoice is a document type 810, uh, at least in, in the X12 standard. And an EDI purchase order is an 855. You might be familiar with these document types. So ARC is going to automatically append a message header called X12 transaction code to these messages as they're passing through the flow so that we have easy access to this metadata, data about the EDI document, that it is an 855 or an 810. So all that I've needed to do here in this branch connector is check for the specific message header called X12 transaction code, because that's the name of the header that ARC generates automatically. Uh, I've kept the data type as string. It's, you know, it is a number, but really we're, we care about the number as it is a, a string of characters rather than the numerical value. And then we just want to check to see if it's equal to 810 or if it's equal to 855. And as we can see, we have a different uh, mapping and integration into our backend system, depending on if it's an 810 or an 855. If we're going to map an invoice into our backend database, 
that's going to be a different relationship to our database and a different table that we're inserting into uh, than in 855. So we don't want to, we need to have different mappings and different backend integration uh, interfaces based on the different document types. So we definitely don't want to try to shove all this through the same mapping connector and the same database connector. So we can use this branch connector to detect what document type it is and send it through the appropriate mapping and backend integration flow. So here we can see uh, if the X12 transaction code is 810, then we output to XML map 810, which is visually represented here. And if it's equal to 855, then we pass along this flow to the mapping of the 855 into our PO ax, which is of course, uh, which is of course purchase order acknowledgements uh, database table. Here, the example is Postgres, but of course it doesn't really matter what what database or backend system you're using. And then one final thing to point out here is the fallback. So if you're a programmer or if you have any experience with programming, then you know that there's usually a default case, some sort of what happens if it falls all the way through the options that you've provided. And so that's what this fallback is doing. So in this case. If we detect that our EDI data has a transaction code that is not 810 and is not 855, or maybe it just doesn't have a transaction code at all, maybe this is you know, some sort of um, improper transmission from our partner, then we want to do something with it. In this case, um, I've just configured a notify connector. So notify is going to send an email to whoever I say it should send an email to. In this case, it's just going to notify our system administrator that something weird happened here. We got a document we didn't expect. Maybe you should take a look at it. Maybe it's indicative of a larger problem. Whatever it is, we want human eyes on this. So as part of our automated workflow, we can sort of embed here the ability for a human to be notified if something strange happens. So with this uh, branch connector configured, we can go ahead and do a little simple test here. So first, I'm going to uh, upload a 810 invoice here. This is sort of simulating like we just received this from our trading partner. Obviously, I don't have a live trading partner sending me data right now. So we're going to simulate that by uploading this from a file on disk. And once this gets sent through the flow, first it's going to warn me that I don't actually have any way of sending acknowledgments that I received this EDI data. Don't worry about it. It's a, you know, a simple self-contained demo, but the warning is about our EDI level acknowledgement. So it's going to come down here to this branch connector. And we see that it's already successfully processed it through automation. And it's going to, of course, look at this logical conditional. It's going to read that header. It's going to notice that the value of the transaction code is 810, because that's the type of file that I uploaded. If you're curious, this is what the 810 looks like. You can see that Amazon 810.edi is the same file name. Um, and so where, where is it? It's an ST. There it is. So an ST, that 810 value is telling us that this is an, uh, an invoice. So this is what ARC is looking at when it's adding that header automatically, it's telling us, okay, we know what the transaction code is. So it knows it's equal to 810. And assuming nothing strange happens, it will have routed it along this flow path to map into the 810. Yeah, so he, here we can see this is unsent. Um, I disabled automation in this uh, connector just so that we can you know, watch this happen in real time. But here we see that Amazon 810 EDI data has arrived here in this flow path. Now, I haven't actually configured the mapping and integration with our backend system because that's not really the focus of this webinar, but hopefully you get the point that, you know, assuming I had actually configured this workflow, we've now successfully routed it down the logical path that we need to handle it appropriately. And similarly, I'm not going to uh, upload an 855 because it's a bit redundant, but hopefully you can see how had we uploaded an 855, it's going to read that value and route it down um, the second path. I will go ahead, though, and upload a file that doesn't match either of those two test cases. So let's say for some reason, let's not do that. Let's say for some reason, our partner sends us an 850. So this is an EDI 850, that's a purchase order. That's not what they're supposed to send us. That's gonna be very weird. Uh, when we get to this branch connector, it's gonna detect that that's not 810, that's not 855. And of course, that means it's going to route it to our notify connector. And here you can see our 850. So it could tell our system administrator, hey, something weird has happened. Um, you know, somebody's got to take a look at that. I don't know why we've got an 850 from this partner that's supposed to send us 810s and 855s. So that's uh, the first example of using this branch connector to logically and dynamically route data, uh, EDI document types based on that uh, EDI document type value. Um, we're going to do one more quick example here to drive the point home. Um, this is going to show off kind of a cool feature of the branch connector that doesn't really get captured. 
in this example, even though this is a common example that's worth showing off, here's something sort of more, more interesting, more cool. So let's take um, this example flow. So we've got another partner connecting to us via AS2. Excuse me. Um, and we are once again receiving inbound X12 documents. Let's say they're invoices, and then we're mapping them into our backend. So very simple, normal uh, C data arc scenario. But we want, what we want to do now is a, a kind of data validation or data integrity check, which is maybe we're worried that certain invoices we've been getting have quantity values, like the quantity of things that they're invoicing are outside of our expected bounds. So we're sort of worried that there's something weird going on with the quantity of some of these purchase or some of these invoices. And so we want to start handling these EDI documents differently based on the quantity of the item that they're invoicing. We can do that, of course, with the same branch connector. Um, and let's do that now. So we're going to have the same setup at the front end. We want to receive the EDI document, in this case, an invoice, translate it into XML. And then once it's translated into XML, we can start doing more things with it. So this is where we'll insert sort of our new logic. So we'll go here to the branch connector, add one to the flow. And we're looking here at the quantity of the items being invoiced. So just call it quantity. And we'll go ahead and connect it. Now, what I wanted to show off about this use case is the ability to look inside or read data from the EDI document type uh, within our branch connector. We didn't really get a taste of this in the previous example because ARC automatically appends this message header, the X12 transaction code. That's all handled automatically behind the scenes. So that doesn't really give us a glimpse into you know, reading different values from the data. So let's get a glimpse of reading the values from the data uh, in this example. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to provide a template of our EDI document type uh, in this X12 connector by uploading a test file. So here I'm just using a file that represents the kind of data that we're using, in this case, an 810 EDI file. Now that this has been uploaded, I actually have access to the structure of an 810 EDI here in my branch connector. So we can see this. So the sample file, that's what I'm saying is uh, reading that template. And as you can see, we just uploaded this Amazon 810. Um, and so we can use that file that I just uploaded as a template. You'll notice we have a bunch of others. These are sort of the generic EDI document schemas for other uh, EDI files. So if you don't have a sample file, you can use sort of what our templates think is, you know, a sort of a generic standard model for these EDI documents. But usually it can be helpful to have a specific example that you've uploaded. So I'll go with this 810 that I just uploaded. And if I save that, we can choose one of these XPath values. So if you recall, I mentioned that the XPath is just a path to a specific value within an XML document. And now that we've uploaded a sample file, we can actually find all of the XPaths in our XML document. So if you've seen EDI before, you should recognize these are the segments and elements of our 810 EDI value. So this is giving us, um, this sample file is giving us access to the actual structure of our data that we're expecting to receive from our trading partner. So this makes it really simple to say, add logic like what we're looking for. So um, I know that the IT1 loop is where we get information about the specific items being ordered. That's the item loop. So I know that uh, the quantity is here in IT02. So if I just click on that, now the path is a little bit outside the bounds of the text box, but I've just told it to look for that IT02, IT102 uh, element, which contains the quantity of the item being ordered. And at that point, if I say, add a, a very simple um, mathematical operator, like, is greater than 100 or 1,000. Obviously, it doesn't really matter. It's just an example. Uh, then there we go. So if this is greater than 1,000, then we know we have like a high quantity uh, invoice coming in. We're looking for that uh, the, the quantity of the items being ordered here, and we're checking to see if it's greater than 1,000. So with this, we now have uh, and again, the, the X path is sort of going outside of the, the display here, but we know that if this represents the quantity being invoiced, if that's greater than a thousand, well, maybe then we want to do some extra logic here. So again, this is all just uh, a bit of an example here, uh, but maybe we want to validate that that invoice is actually what we expect it is. We wanna make sure there's nothing fishy here. Um, and of course we could add whatever logic we want. Maybe we wanna email somebody just like in this case, 
Uh, the point here is that we can use any of these logical connectors to implement the logic that we want. But let's say that we want to validate that that invoice is actually what we're expecting it to be. Um, and that way, before we map it into our database, we can just have an extra validation step to make sure nothing fishy is going on here. So at this point, we could have um, a sort of a logical branch here, looking inside the data, making sure the quantity, seeing if the quantity is unusually high. And if it is, adding a validation step to say, hey, hold on, is that like is, is something weird going on here? If so, we want to terminate this transaction and, and, and not process it like normal. But if the quantity is not greater than 1,000, then we can simply bypass that validation step and map it as usual. So here we have sort of another example of branching and treating data differently based on that EDI document. But in this case, instead of just looking at what EDI document type it is, we're looking inside the EDI data itself, checking the quantity, so it's greater than 1,000. If it is, we validate it, make sure nothing weird is going on. And if it's not, we just skip that validation step and go straight to mapping it into our backend system. So again, this is a bit of a canned simplistic example, but hopefully this gives you another sense of how these logical connectors in CData Arc can not just you know, check headers or check file names, but actually check inside the data itself and perform logical operations uh, to treat data differently, depending on you know, what's actually contained in that EDI document. So that wraps up the demo for today. Uh, we'll head back to our PowerPoint slides for any questions that might've come in. So I'll check the questions tab here and Zoom. Uh, I don't currently see any open questions. So if you have them, uh, you have a few moments here as I stall to drop those in the chat and I'll respond to them as best I can. Uh, while we're waiting, I'll mention that this is recorded. So if you felt like I went a little fast or you weren't quite sure at a few moments what was happening, then we will distribute that recording to you later today or early tomorrow. And you can check back over that. Um, but my stalling has uh, not yielded any, uh, we've got a question coming in. Can the entire path be displayed in a tooltip? Um, that's a good question. So I, I believe that if you hover over it or expand that field then you can get the full path, um, that you can certainly display that in, in the UI. I, I, whether it would be separated from the connector itself is a good question, but if you want to expand that or hover over it, um, then that's how you'd see the full path there. Um, but yes, that's a, that's a good question. It's helpful to see um, the path of the value being uh, being checked there. Of course, once you logically know that this is checking the quantity, then it's, you know, it's sort of like an abstract concept anyway, but that's a good question. Um, Brent asks, is there any logic in the validator connector? Yes, there is. Uh, it is entirely a logical connector uh, for checking if certain values fall within the expected range or um, you know, if the ID of somebody is within some enumerated list of possible values, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's just that this demo isn't really, that's sort of outside the scope of this particular demo. Just wanted to sort of bring that up as how you could use the branch connector to treat data differently. So a follow-up question to that, will you have a demo on the validator connector? Yes, um, we certainly will. It's not uh, concretely planned right now, but we always take customer requests and feedback into our decision-making. So given that you've just asked that question, that almost certainly guarantees that we will. Um, I should mention that the next release of CDATA Arc, we do quarterly releases. So the upcoming uh, Q3 release in July, I believe, um, will have updates to the validator connector. So that will sort of dovetail and give us a, a good chance to show off those improvements. And with that, it seems like the questions have slowed down. So I will take this moment to transition to our send off. Uh, if anything here looked interesting to you, if you're not familiar with ARC, you want to check it out more, you can always go to arc.cdata.com. Something to always mention is that we do have a free fully functional trial. So if you're suspicious that, you know, somehow I rigged the, the demo and it's not as simple as I think, or as I'm saying it is, then you can always try it out for yourself um, at arc.cdata.com slash trial, get, uh, get started with it right away. We don't require that you have a call with us or supply a credit card or anything like that. You can just download it and get started. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, my personal email, which probably should be up there, is mattss.cdata.com. I'll be happy to answer any questions. If you email our team at sales at cdata.com, they'll make sure to route that question uh, to the appropriate parties to get answered. So, you know, of course, you can always just email um, sales and, and we'll figure out who is best equipped to speak with you. So with that, that's all I had prepared today. Thank you so much for joining and I hope to see you on the next one. Hopefully you learned something and uh, have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.